Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about Season 4, Episode 3 of FX and Hulu's Atlanta, entitled Born to Die. Uh, the op episode title is pretty obvious here. It's the name of the song that this y Yodel Kid character uh, ends up winning a Grammy for at the end of the episode. Um, but before I get started, I also want to read to you guys, as I do every week with Atlanta, the episode description that's on the Hulu website because i always think it's inter interesting and entertaining to see how that description ties into the episode because like you read it beforehand you're like i have no idea what this episode is about then you watch the episode and it's actually kind of funny so um <clears throat> pardon me i'm just getting over a cold that i got like right at pretty much right after i recorded last week's atlanta episode i'm like 99 percent right now but uh, my throat's still a little bit scratchy my voice a little bit off so you might hear me clear my throat a little bit but uh, let me read this description <clears throat> Description for you guys. I think that's it. I, that felt like a one of those throat clears. We like, all right, I'm good now. <laughs> I'm tired of all these old heads hating. Just let me listen to my <laughs> listen to my Italian drill music and blue eyed trap in peace. Y'all can listen to D'Angelo or whatever. You know, when I read that beforehand, I was like, what an interesting contrast between like blue eyed trap and D'Angelo. Like it felt random, but it was not random at all. That was very very specific. So. Uh, getting into the episode, I feel like this episode was kind of, um, if you look at it in uh, from two different perspectives, I think you can have two different interpretations of the quality of the episode. You know, we had two plot lines in this one. We had the, the plot line with Paperboy and this whole YWA thing, and then we had the uh, plot line with Ern and D'Angelo. And if you're looking at those plot lines for... Uh, I think really substantial and an impactful commentary, this episode's gonna fall flat for you. But if you're looking at it just from a strictly entertainment perspective, like I'm just here to laugh, see how funny the episode is, have a good time, you probably like this episode a little bit more. For me, I felt like the Paperboy storyline had some good moments, and I'm gonna talk about both, obviously. The Paperboy storyline had some good moments. The Earn storyline with D'Angelo, it, it could be me. You know, there, this show makes a lot of references to things that I would say, make, for me, I'd say I probably get them like seven out of ten times and I'll probably miss like three. And even then, it's kind of like those three times where I don't quite get whatever the reference is, it doesn't it doesn't impact my enjoyment of the episode most of the time. Uh, this episode feels like there's something about D'Angelo that I don't know that might have helped me understand why this part of, like, I don't even understand why this part of this storyline exists. Like, what was the point of the D'Angelo shit? If for anything other than just pure entertainment, if there's like a a, a deep meaning to this, I hey, I'll, I'll admit it, you don't hear it from me often, guys, so if you do, uh, take note of it now. If there was a point to D'Angelo shit, it was over my fucking head because I fucking missed it, man. I don't know what to tell. I don't know what to tell you guys, but um, let me start by talking about the uh, the Paperboy plotline. Um, he's uh, essentially working on trying to find new ways to stay relevant and, and and rich because he gets approached by this dad after he performs at this bar mitzvah, and the dad is like, you know, teach my son how to be. It, it, I mean, he said how to be a rapper, but it really just felt like teach my son to have black swag, but whatever um he's like you know teach my son how to be a rapper teach me how to be like you he does a lot of <laughs> insulting like mimicking moves and like imitations of like black body language and shit and uh, uh paper boy is kind of like turned off by this and so this guy offers like a million dollars for him to do it <laughs> and uh then he he seems to buy into it so this storyline starts off kind of like as your standard kind of like uh, like white people co-opting black culture storyline right and i wasn't rolling my eyes or anything at this point but i was kind of like okay how many times are we we gonna retread how white people take black culture now that it's some white people doing some shit then it really takes off and becomes popular and i'm kind of like okay white people still our culture thing like uh, we've Atlanta itself has done that enough. I don't know if I need to see this again. But what I ended up liking about this portion of the storyline is that 
uh, this episode takes that idea a little bit farther. And it takes it to a place where it's kind of like, why don't we as black people who see that this is happening find a way to take advantage of it and use it for our own benefit? And if you think about it, this actually, well, actually, well, let me talk about this first, and then I'm going to talk about how this relates to uh, something that I think Atlanta has done before. Uh, but, you know, uh, so Paperboy goes to what seems like a seminar, kind of, and he learns about YWA, which is like a young white avatar, and essentially means like managing and, gro I don't want to say grooming, but, <laughs> but managing and like helping uh, create the proper image for like a young white kid to take off as a rapper rather than being like a, a I won't say a wash rapper because like they, they they go through these stages and they for whatever reason they use Chief Keith. But like this that's the randomness of the show that I do like. They use Chief Keith as this example and it shows like album cover when uh Chief Keith was like when he first came out, like his first album, then uh Chief Keith kind of like present day, and then this idea where Chief Keith is like doing family movies as an old washed up rapper. And you know, that's something that, uh, aside from that Ice Cube joke about are we there yet being super wildly fucking predictable, uh, the idea of, okay, how do we uh, continue to stay relevant, continue to stay rich, if not becoming more relevant and more rich, while also kind of like aging out of this business? Because rap is a young man's game, right? And, you, you know, you're not always going to be Jay-Z or, or Snoop Dogg or Nas, like somebody like that who manages to stay relevant in the business well beyond when they should be. Most of the time you end up in different avenues trying to make money and stay relevant other ways. And that's how you end up Ice Cube and Are We There Yet? That's how you end up being ludicrous in uh, Fast and the Furious. You know, that's how they, they end up getting in these positions. And I don't want to say getting in this position because that makes it sound like it's a bad thing what they're doing. But um, if you are a paper boy... And you're, let's say you're paperboy, let's say you're like 30, right? So you're like on the higher end of of of, of the rapper's ages, because I feel like a lot of these guys right now are in their young uh, younger 20s. If you're starting to age out, because he because Paperboy says like he's he just did an arena tour, all this good shit, right? But if you're starting to age out, if you want to continue to be rich and remain relevant or get richer and more relevant, how do you do that without moving into like making PG movies? And they essentially say, you know, you get these young white avatars and you manage them. And uh, what I liked about that was it kind of reminded me of, it was actually episode three of Atlanta last season. It was the one where, I don't remember the name of the episode, but it was the one where, uh, I think it was the one that ended with like Paperboy cutting down that tree at that dude's house. <laughs> uh, but the B plot of that episode, I think the A plot was the Paperboy stuff, but the B plot was it was this white dude um and he was like super offended by every he was like super fucking woke he got mad at his girlfriend because she said something something weird to Darius I can't remember what it was but he like went way over the top with it and he wanted to like uh I can't what was it he wanted to uh do like some I can't remember what the specifics was but he wanted to work with this black artist named TJ and it was like uh he was like British or whatever and uh, Earn and uh, anybody with eyes thought this TJ dude's art sucked. And Earn was kind of feeling guilty about the idea of this white dude being willing to give so much of his money and so much of his energy and so much of his time toward backing a guy who's putting out bad art. And he had a conversation with Paperboy and Paperboy was kind of like, white people have been scamming us forever. Why don't we scam people too? Like, And I, I talked about this scene in my video for episode three last season. And I love that because it made me think about, like, why don't we do that? Like, why why would we all of a sudden have this moral uh, conscience about uh, how some how about how a white person who's co-opting our culture is being treated? Like when they just take, 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 take from us and take our culture, do it, not even necessarily need to call it their own, still call it their own, pretend like they made it up and profit from it. Why don't we uh, you know, throw that back, reverse that, do that in there, flip it and reverse it. Why don't, why don't we do that? And this was kind of like that, you know, it was like Paperboy going, you know what? Why don't I do that? Why don't I take advantage of one of these young white kids and their youth and their popularity and use that to make myself money 
and to stay relevant and in, and in this case win a Grammy. And I thought that was a really good, uh, really good kind of like extension of what would have been a kind of tired uh, plot thread, which is the the simple, you know, white people take our shit. Uh, you know, what are we gonna do about that? Oh, like they, they, oh, he's these white people are, are are making these whack rap songs, and but they're popular, and that fucking sucks. Like, I like the extension of of Paperboy actually going along with this, finding success in it, winning this Grammy, and. It was just an interesting plot thread, I think. But it was it wasn't great by any means, though. It was like it was alright, but like, you know, it was it was fine. You know, I get it. It was entertaining. But where I think this episode fails is like I said, the the plot line was earned because the whole D'Angelo thing, like I'm ready I'm readily willing to admit I'm not as smart as I think I am. Because <laughs> I think very highly of my intellect. But but I just did not get this aspect of the storyline unless it really was just meant to be like randomness that was fun like and it wasn't meant to make some big grand uh deep point if it was make meant to make a deep point i will readily admit i didn't get it and i'm fine with doing that because i have people who jump in my comments and be like yo i i didn't understand this and i'm glad that you explained it i like coming here when i don't understand an episode or something and explaining it and i'm sorry y'all but the d'angelo shit was lost on me man and maybe it's something I just don't know about D'Angelo. I don't know. But um, I think the problem here, though, is that a lot of times when you have uh, these deep cuts or these references that not everyone's going to get, it's important to still have that aspect of the storyline be uh, be enjoyable or entertaining, even if you don't get the even if you don't get the nature of the deep cut. Like, for instance, you know, last week you guys told me in the comments that that Blue Blood character was based on uh it was based on MF Doom, which is like, of course, like, wow, you, like, once it was told to me, I'm like, oh, right, yeah, finding out after the fact. But I just missed it at the time, right? But not knowing that reference at that time didn't hinder my ability to enjoy that aspect of the episode. It was an enhancement. Like, if I had got that, I'd have been like the Leo meme, you know, pointing at the TV and shit. So it's like, that's cool. But if this D'Angelo thing is, again, some sort of reference that I'm missing... The problem here is that it 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 is hindering my ability to enjoy this aspect of the storyline because the storyline revolves around you understanding what this D'Angelo thing is about. And I'm sure like maybe if I thought about it, I could probably arrive somewhere where the whole we are all D'Angelo thing and, and earn coming to this realization. If I thought about it, I could probably come up with something, but I wanted to get in front of you guys and talk about the episode. And right now it's like it, it was kind of... Again, and that's assuming it was some sort of deep cut that I'm missing. It was lost on me for whatever reason this week. But there is still a lot of great humor, I think, in this episode, too, that kind of counterbalances, uh, you know, the fact that the the earned stuff didn't really work for me and that the Paperboy stuff, even though it did work, it wasn't great. There was some really good stuff that I thought, just from a humor aspect, that really worked here. Um, I liked the uh, the meeting at the beginning. Well, I, well... I take that back. I didn't like it, but like, in the sense, like I found it entertaining. What I did like, though, was that the idea of a of a management company managing someone like the white lady in the video in the the ring doorbell video that we see at the beginning, where she pulls a gun on this kid who they said is like was doing fundraising, and their response is, "How do we fix this for her?" And Ern's response is. I don't, I don't want to fix shit for this racist bitch. Why don't we just get different clients? <laughs> and I also kind of liked in that conversation that the guy says, he's like, um, uh, you'd have to get somebody like, and I can't remember the first name, and he's like, or D'Angelo. And then Ern's kind of like, I think I could get D'Angelo. And for me, that, at first, that kind of felt like a shot at D'Angelo. Like this guy thought D'Angelo was way, way more relevant or popular than he is. And Ern's point was kind of like, D'Angelo ain't as popping as you think. I can kind of, I think I can get to him. Uh, I don't know if that was the purpose or not, but it was funny to me. Um, I also laughed and cringed simultaneously when uh, Paperboy shows up at the studio with all the white kids, the Yodel kid, the other, what was his name, Benny. And they're rapping terribly, making all their bad songs. And he introduced himself and Vinny's like, oh, you're the dude my dad bought. Like, oh, man, that fucking made me cringe, dude. Like, ah. Uh. But it was, like, also funny. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. When you know it's intentional, it's 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 easier to handle. And then I also liked in that same scene when Paperboy turns around and the camera moves and you see, like, 
the pregnant girl with the baby, uh, with the baby, the pregnant girl, obviously pregnant with a baby, drinking that Capri Sun. I like random imagery like that. Like whoever it was that said, let's just have like a random pregnant girl sitting on the couch. Kudos to you. Whoever had, whoever said we should have her drinking a Capri Sun. I hope you got a raise. <laughs> that was so random that it made it extra fucking funny. And then also then later we see that she's giving birth because she's, Apparently, Yodel Kid's baby mama, she comes and accepts his Grammy on his behalf since he's dead. And uh, she's had the baby. She's wearing like a baby carrier on the front. I thought, you know, nice little call back to her earlier. Um, I like... So when we do meet the guy that I guess is supposed to be D'Angelo, a representative of D'Angelo, because we're all D'Angelo, apparently. Um, he's like making this sandwich with like... like what has to be the highest fucking fat the fat grams count that you could possibly have in a sandwich he and sodium he fucking put like there was like peanut butter on the bread then he gets some chicken and takes off just the skin puts the skin on there and then puts like season puts lorries on it like come on bro like this sounds ridiculous but i thought that was hilarious and then when when he sings and rubs the rubs the peanut butter across Irm's forehead like that's why I'm like that stuff was so funny is so random that I I, I kind of hope I'm not missing something that's supposed to be some sort of deep cut with the D'Angelo shit and it really was meant to just be random and funny because it works that way it works with random and funny so like me just kind of coming in with this mindset of like what is it what kind of message is Atlanta gonna give me this week and giving me the very clear messaging in the Paperboy storyline, it had me looking for it in the Earn storyline, especially when last week with Earn storyline, we got the kind of like the reveal at the end of what all of the stuff that we had seen with the white character, what all that meant. We got that reveal at the end. So I'm thinking something similar similar here. Like I'm seeing a whole bunch of shit involved in Earn that don't make sense. There's going to be some reveal and I'm going to be like, oh, that's what the point was. It didn't happen. But if it's just meant to be funny, it works that way. Um, and then lastly... As a, as the number one hardcore fan of Asensia, seeing that Dasani case would have been my breaking point too. Like, man, fuck this Dasani. No, I want to see D'Angelo right fucking now. You gonna try to give me some fucking Dasani and it's warm? Nah, bro. Like, no. You, give me Asensia or let me see this. Let me see D'Angelo right the fuck now. That's what we. That's where we at. So I, I, I feel earned by being fed up. At the point of, of seeing the Dasani. But um, if you guys have thoughts on the D'Angelo shit and, 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 and the place that you felt that part of the storyline had in this episode, let me know what you thought. Like I said, again, it could just be, you know, it could be a brain fart on my part. It could be me overreaching, like me trying to be too fucking smart. Like, ah, oh, there's something going on here. Let me figure out what the fuck it is. When it really could have just been like, let's just have some random fun. And, and and that's what that is. But either way, regardless, I felt like this episode, it was just fine. You know, it wasn't great. The laughs were there. There were some funny moments, but they weren't like uproariously funny either. So it was kind of like, it, it was just, everything was fine. And, you know, I, I don't sit here and expect uh, uh, remarkable television for 10 straight weeks on this show. I hope for it. I don't expect it. Um, but, you know, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And we will talk about it. And I will see you guys next week for episode four. And until then, peace.